Welcome back to lesson five, freedom from life dominating sins. We will be taking a look at Romans 6, 8 through 11. Permit me to read the scriptures. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is never to die again. Death no longer is master over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word if is used no less than 35 times in the book of Romans by the Apostle Paul. You may think that is not necessarily significant, but it is extremely significant. The word for if in the Greek language is a typical writing style, and it means this. If it is a true statement, and indeed it is. Paul writes that it is a true statement that our, that our union in Christ was a result of identifying with his death. He then pens, because of that belief, the pardoned prisoner can equally believe that he will also live with him. This living with him can have a secondary meaning of the final resurrection and heaven and life. But the implications of this line of reasoning would be that I am pardoned, but I'm on my own until I go to heaven. This is not acceptable theology nor is there any hope offered for the pardoned ex-con. It could be likened to a judge granting the pardon and giving some final thoughts. You are pardoned. Your past criminal activities will not be held against you. I encourage you to live a straight and narrow life. I don't want to see you in my courtroom again. Good luck. And the forgiven prisoner leaves and returns to the only environment he knows. And the cycle continues. Paul says the belief in our pardon leads to the belief I can live pardoned. I can live totally different. I'm not bound by my past to return to my past. I choose to appropriate the abundant life. The Greek word for live means dedicated to God. The release from my captivity to a lifestyle of sin and degradation consecrates my whole being to my factor. I am no longer free to do what I want. I am only free to do what I should. I can live a life separated from my past haunts, companions, and activities. My pardon provides the basics to avoid my past. Christ's resurrection over death and the grip of sin is one of those precious and magnificent promises I must appropriate. Paul returns to using the word knowing. Christ died. He rose from the dead. At that moment, he vanquished death and sin that caused death. But how enduring is this theological truth? Rick, you wrote earlier that people who were raised from the dead die again. So how do I know the genuineness of this claim? Is Paul advertising falsely? These are great questions which Paul anticipates as a good lawyer. The word knowing is the key. The word for knowing is oida. It means something gained through experience. It is a knowing that comes through seeing or perception. It is a knowledge concluded by living life. This knowing is not through the agency of books or education. It comes by testing biblical principles in real life and noting the results. The pardoned prisoner walks out of the prison yard into the warm sun on a sidewalk that is surrounded by shrubs and flowers and grass. He possesses the basics to start a new life. He has a genuine body of believers that will care for him, mentor him, hold him accountable, disciple him, counsel him, 
love him, pray for him, and lend aid to him. But there is an internal struggle. Can I trust these people? Are they religious fanatics? What am I getting myself into? I feel like they will control my life. What I know is not the best, but at least I know where I stand with my old gang. But he tries. They help get him back on his feet. Immediate financial assistance is provided. Um, help him to budget. And slowly the money is not as tight. He discovers that what they teach him makes more sense than what he has previously heard. When he meets with them, they ask about his soul, what temptations he experienced that day, and what happened. When he fails, they gently rebuke him and show him how he can respond differently in the future. As he does, he knows he can live like Christ lived on the earth. The knowledge derived from living life according to God's principle boosts his confidence that he can live consistently because Christ died once, never to die again. Since death and sin are not master over Christ, the fear is expelled by his resurrection. I have hope that I can resist yielding to my former life and returning to and returning to slavery and to sin. <clears throat> the word for master is curio. It can be translated as Lord, someone empowered to rule or have dominion over something or someone. Curio means someone has jurisdiction, like a gang lord who has a specific turf, turf uh, or rules over it with a strong, unyielding fist. The fist of life dominating sin. Every bone in the fist is crushed beyond repair. Sin has no jurisdiction. Sin has no territorial claims. The death of Christ and his resurrection, like the neighborhood watch groups, dismantled and drive out the old gang. They are kept out by people experiencing the newness of life. These pardoned people have tasted the goodness of God. They drank from the waters of life. They quake with fear and trembling to ponder what their lives were before release. How could they ever go back? Christ is God, but lives for God. The second person of the Trinity is equal to and with the Father. Christ Jesus possesses the same attributes, nature, and essence as God the Father. He lives to do the will of his Father. His life magnifies the glory of his Father. The pardoned prisoner focus is to live for God. It is not to live for self because there is a false sense of entitlement. It is not to live for others to make up for the hardships created by my created by their self-centeredness. It is not to develop a good reputation and future benefits that one thinks are associated with it. The parolee is to live for God, like his benefactor, Christ Jesus. He strives that this new life, by its renewed mind, will influence and govern his emotions and volition to choose how to use every part of his anatomy to live for God. Paul will develop this further in verses 12 to 14. Because of Paul's previous exposition, consider yourself to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word consider is interesting. The Greek word is legitimai. You recognize our English word logic. It is translated as reckoned, account for, compute, calculate. It is a mathematical term. It means reach the right conclusion using the appropriate formula. Let me illustrate. See if you can find the sum of the following numbers. 2 plus 2 times 3 divided by 4. Your answer should be 3. You reached the correct solution by recognizing and using the math symbols I spoke of. 
The word legitimai involves thought governed by facts. This word considered is used 40 times in the New American Standard Bible with 19 of those occurrences in the book of Romans. You would take this for granted as Paul writes this book from a legal lawyer perspective, appealing to reason and logic. The ex-con is to reach the right conclusion, reason out that he has the ability to understand the theology of baptism into Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. He can further conclude he can live for God through Christ because of his firsthand knowledge that the aforementioned truths are real to him from daily living. Hope you will return next time as we continue this series.